Hello and welcome, my name is Josh Burns. In this video I'm going to be finishing up the Prometheus inspired biomechanical environment. The hull is created, the chamber is done, now all that's left is to create the texture and light the scene. The key elements I'll be using to achieve this are CC Reptile, Pixel Blender Smart Normal Map, Offset, and Light Fall Off under Lighting in Element 3D. Let's begin. So I've made the hallway, I made what's at the end of the hallway, and now it's looking pretty stark, it's just white. Now it's time to get some texture on it. And to achieve that today, I'm going to be creating a normal map to be applied to all the textures, as well as lighting the scene. So before I can actually create the normal map though, I have to download Smart Normal Map. And that's available from Adobe. It's a pixel bender filter or a plugin, I guess. Uh, you can download it here. There's, there'll be a link in the description as well. And what this allows you to do is take any image and apply this filter and it will turn it into a normal map that Element will recognize and give it that extra texture. So once you have that installed, you'll have to restart uh, After Effects, obviously. And once you've done that, then you want to create a new composition. You want it to be square. So I went with just 2000 by 2000 pixels. Just want a pretty good resolution because in some cases you're pretty close to the texture and you want it to look good. So here it is, it's a big white box. And so what I did is, uh, first off, I wanted to get sort of a very biomechanical look. And uh, with that, um, what I wanted to do was just add a solid and add fractal noise to that. But I wanted a sort of a engineered, living yet engineered look. And so what I want to do is use the block uh, type of noise, the scale width and scale height, and get something that looks sort of like this. It's good, it's a little too perfect because you can see there's some straight lines there that doesn't look like something that would be, you know, living. What I want to do is create actually a displacement map for that. So what I did is I just duplicated that layer and then increase the size quite a bit and uh, decrease the contrast a little bit. So it's very simple as well, just simplify it. You can see there, it's sort of a blocky texture. And then just apply a fast blur to that as well. And just to blur a little bit and make sure that you repeat the edge pixels. Pre-compose it and make sure you move all the attributes and label it if you're into that sort of thing. So you've created the displacement map. I went back into my main comp and on the black solid, I added the effect displacement map and then choose this newly created comp here as the displacement and play around with the displacement amount horizontal and vertical something that you like and make sure that you choose wrap pixels as well okay now it's looking a little bit more organic uh, then I just duplicated that whole layer again brought everything down quite a bit a lot darker and also play around with the scale make it a bit more squashed and then just draw some masks in to create some sort of banding that goes across the entire texture. So next we want to add some extra details, some pieces that go over top that uh, sort of really create that biomechanical look. Okay, so first off I just want to create a really small solid, a little square, and right off the bat I want to pre-compose it and leave all attributes so it stays the size that it is. Because I'm going to be using the effect CC Repetile, creating some patterned uh, effects that go along with this here. So this piece, I just wanted to be sort of like a, a bit of a grid shape, but also really imperfect. And so there's one, and then go to the library and just duplicate that one. As you can see, I'm always using a great naming convention here. And then go into this one, and then what I want to do is just delete all those masks and create sort of a vent shape piece, and that can be incorporated as well. Again, you want to have that organic look Okay, that looks good. Okay, so we have these two pieces, and they're pretty good. And then I'm gonna create actually another, but this one I actually want to be uh, something that goes all the way to the top. This is gonna be more like a conduit or something that goes along the texture. So I wanna leave the width at 150, but increase the height to 2000. Kind of create a bit of a teardrop shape, it sort of goes along these conduits, I guess. Right, and then just duplicate that and set these to subtract so they're actually cutting out of the texture. So we go back and we have sort of our, our different pieces here. And I also wanted to add one more. So this is going to be kind of a, a sort of a repeating pattern. It's a, a sort of a spine type shape. And again, just duplicate this black solid, delete the masks, and just draw a shape. So I'm going to duplicate it a few times and make it into a pattern really quick so that I can have it loop nicely and still sort of have that shape. Okay, that looks pretty close. Let's just duplicate it and drag it down. Then another one on top. So now this is where I want to use Repetile. 
It's a nice little effect. Gives you some options for, you know, sort of different ways you can use it. Just scale that down a little bit. Actually, so they're just a little tighter. And so what I want to do is just create these sort of bars here and, and incorporate them in a few different spots. Different counts, like three on one side, four on the other. And now do the exact same thing with all these little elements. So line this one up sort of along the side here, duplicate it, bring it in up here, and just sort of add them in as you as you like. And basically, basically you want to create a pattern that's going to loop uh, nicely, but uh, that's not quite what we're doing here. Right now we're just getting sort of the elements in place. And just create some different looks, you know. You can use the same pieces over and over and, and have a few different uh, looks by scaling it down or stretching it one way or the other. You can create the texture however you want. I'm just showing you how I did mine. You know, obviously if you have uh, something in mind that you want to do, do it that way. Add an adjustment layer, add offset, and then move the coordinates, the shift center to zero and zero. And what that does is it actually moves everything up and then shows you where your seam is. It's right in the center. And so then I just take a mask and mask out that area so that my original is showing through. And in the top sort of, or the four corners, it's uh, all the original. Okay, and then I add another adjustment layer on top. And this is where I add Smart Normal Map. And what that does is it turns your black and white image, or any image that you use, into a normal map. So I wasn't quite happy with it, so I just wanted to add a few more extra pieces here and there. And then it's also a good idea. If you feather the masks a bit, it'll just create a little bit nicer look. So now I'm just adjusting the uh, brightness and contrast of the fractal noise layer just to get a little bit more contrast. So you can see here, a lot of nice detail with this one. It looks very, it looks like a mess, honestly. But uh, when you do have the smart normal map turned on, you can really see how the uh, detail is. So I just added a few more of these sort of spine shaped ones and just really made them uh, subtle in the image there. Call this the normal map. I actually labeled something. I should get a prize. Okay, so now that we have the normal map created, you wanna add it to your custom texture maps in Element and go into the plugin. So you just wanna create a new material, rename it Alien Texture, and then add that to your layer and choose the normal map there. And you can see it's applied. It looks pretty good. There's not really a way to set your UVs in Element with the beveled mask. However, you do have some presets. And one of those is called Box, and then Box Preserve Aspect Ratio. And Box Preserve Aspect Ratio is a good one to use. It's not perfect, but it's kind of what, what you have. So unless you're doing a sphere, uh, then obviously you want to use a sphere one. And if you use just the UV setting, what we'll do is it'll only put your texture sort of flat on the, the bevel surface, and then any extrusion that you have, it'll be all stretched along that. So uh, I usually just leave it as box or box preserve aspect ratio. Now I'm just uh, setting the color, adding a little bit of reflection. Again, this is really subjective. It's totally up to you what you like. And you can see here, I'm just zooming in, see how it looks. I have draft textures turned off so you can see the full resolution and uh, see how it's all looking. And one other thing too, when you're creating a texture like this, it's a good idea to sort of have everything be set up so you can use it as many times as you like because I just want to use the same map over and over. So instead of actually you know going in and creating a bunch of different maps, one for each of my different pieces, I'm using the same map but adjusting the number of repeats on the actual extrusion model level, not on the on the texture itself, adjusting it on this top level where you can actually choose to repeat. You can do that right in the texture as well, but the great thing is with this way, you can use the same texture over and over and, and have your texture actually applied the way you like it on all these things without having to have a number of different textures. Okay, so we have this here. It looks pretty good. Obviously without lighting, it's not quite there, but uh, the texture is looking good and uh, I've got sort of the scale of each of those pieces done yeah, it looks pretty good. So next thing, uh, once you have that applied, we're gonna move on to lighting. All right, so uh, actually I changed the color a little bit after I'd stopped recording here. You can see I just made it a little bit bluer, a little bit darker, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. So uh, moving on, first thing uh, you wanna do is add a light. And the best way to position lights is with two views I find. So I can see here the curve and then the room. And what I did is I added a light, a point light at the end of the hall. And I think yeah, it was 150 and just a slightly blue and it's a point light. So you can see how it's right near the camera now, but what I did here is just move it to the end of the hall. Now this doesn't look that great because it's just blasting light 
all along that one side wall and it just it doesn't look that good so the way to get the light to look a little bit nicer uh, you just go into element and into the render settings and under lighting you dial up the light fall off so with the light fall off what it lets you do is only have the light affect the area that it's closest to so obviously in the room here there's not very much light at the end of the hall right now so this is where I added in a second light and this one actually had I believe it was 500 for brightness it's quite bright and you can see here it is now casting quite a bit of light in the room which is good but I think I wanted it to be just a little bit more. So with this, basically what I did is as the camera moves down the hall, I adjust the fall off because it's all keyframeable, making sure that as you approach the room, the room actually fills with light because more of the light is actually being projected onto the object itself. And also as I approach the hall, I don't need so much the light at the end of the hall as much because the light in the center of the room is going to be applying most of the light for the scene. So I can actually ramp down the intensity of the light at the end of the hall, which will be sort of replaced by the light in the actual room. This is just how I lit the scene. Obviously, there's lots of ways you can do it. This is how I, I did this one. It's kind of weird. I probably get away with just using the fall off lighting and one light. I just want to adjust the height of actually the light at the end of the hall, bring it down a little bit, reacts a little bit more and shows a little bit more of the texture on the floor because it's hitting more of a side of that structure so it's not so flat on so just to create that extra amount of detail and now I'm just actually increasing the amount of light being projected from that hallway light the one at the end of the hall with that what you can do is you can have it turned up actually quite high and only affecting a small area so you can do a lot with that effect as well so you can see here increasing the amount of fall off so the light dissipates faster it's not as bright so then move up and add a keyframe in and then decrease the fall off so that the entire room gets lit up or at least enough of the room so you can see what you're you know, looking at so now just adjusting where those keyframes are so as the camera approaches the room lights up there you go so that's pretty much how i lit this scene and did the texture then what I did is added a little bit of fog it helps create that scale to your project. So obviously you can go very bright or whatever color you like. Uh, I went with a little bit of a blue uh, hue to it. So obviously the fog is a bit much because it's based on how far it goes in the starting distance. So you can actually decrease the opacity of it to sort of get it so in this this hallway as well as in the, the chamber itself. So now it's still there. It's still a little bit of fog kind of adding that extra level of color at the end of the hall and then also in the chamber once you're in it so you can see a little bit of that extra color there at the end of the hall from the fog once you get it sort of close to what you like or what you're wanting you can use all the same color correction techniques that you use in after effects you know whether it's you know curves or tint or levels or any of those you can get it pretty close using just element and then you know do the rest with you know your standard color correction techniques and obviously there's a thousand different ways to do everything in after effects this is this is just how i did it play around with it play around with the settings get it to where you you know want it to look uh, with the normal maps you can turn them up turn them down have it be a really subtle effect or have it be a very you know prominent effect and you can also use the map that was created you just duplicate the normal map take off the smart normal layer and you have this sort of black and white uh, layer that you can use as a uh, like a reflection map maybe you don't want your texture to have reflection in the, the cracks or the darker areas and that would be you know something you could use for that or uh, you can use it for a occlusion layer as well there's a lot you can do with texture you can get some really really good results um, I like uh, using the smart normal map because I don't have to go out of After Effects uh, I also have a there are plugins for Photoshop as well I use those too it depends on what you want to be doing you can animate a normal map which you can do some really crazy stuff with that so it yeah, has a ton of potential so there it is I hope I was able to answer some of your lighting and texturing questions thanks for watching and thanks for all the great comments if you have any questions or have a request for a future video leave it in the comments or message me and if you want to see more subscribe to my channel I try and post new content regularly Thanks again for watching. My name is Josh Burns. I'll talk to you later.